Prasad, very nice to see you. How's everyone doing tonight? We're here for a Gumpany Gumpany Red Christmas party. We're going to see some old friends. We're going to visit some places we haven't visited before. Yeah. It's going to be all right. Yeah. Couple of more vocals in the mornings. It was a lot louder in the sound check. Oh, that, oh, that's so nice. Oh, yeah, so good because Lord knows I have so much to say. This song is called George Bush Assassino! Don't forget to stop and smash everything you see because friends, only one time only, only one time not to vote. And if you forget not to vote, you can never not vote again. I recommend, I recommend that you practice a holistic approach to life. And that's what this song is about, it's called Zen and the Art of Breaking Everything in This Room. <laughs>
realizing that you're not the child they always wanted. It's about the day you don't come home when they get that phone call on their answer machine saying, Mrs. Cloth, Mrs. T. Cloth, we've got your son down here at the station. If you could come bail him out, um, we would be fine. Yeah. No mother wants to hear that, and Lord knows. Oh, oh, the mothers. They have such a hard time, and you grow up, and well, you're just nasty, and you paint on your walls, and you rip up your clothes they buy for you. It breaks their heart, and somewhere there's a, there's a picture turned against the wall of a very good-looking young man. This song's about that picture. It's called, it's called, this is what happens when you pick up a telephone and you say, I shot President Reagan, and I'm gonna do it again and again and again and again! I'm assuming you're all older than I am. And you don't belong to this club! Let me see your IDs! You scum. 
Most people in the neighborhood are from someplace else. I happen to only live two rivers away, where my parents are, where my mother is probably still crying and wondering if I'll come home for Christmas. Won't he please come home? Why won't he come home? He's a big, big man, big shot, big shot, living in Brooklyn. Mr. Big Shot might come home for Christmas. I order. I'm not from Brooklyn, friends. I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> I propose a toast, if I may. Anyone, anyone who's drinking, just raise your glasses for a good cause. Thank you, friends. This one goes out to all the dead punk rockers out there. All the dead punk rockers. It is a sobering fact, by the time Sid Vicious was my age, he'd been dead for nine years. And what exactly have I accomplished? Well, I want to propose a toast to Mr. Jeffrey Lee Pierce.
two weeks ago we played the most odd show. You don't mind if I sit down for a second? We played the most very bizarre show. I don't know how we got booked. We played up at uh, Marymount College. We played their winter form. <laughs> now, the best thing about this band is the bizarre situations it puts you in. And that's why I love it. We apparently come become, we become some kind of strange attractor to bizarre situations which test your sense of humor. So there we are up at Marymount College. And there's a bunch of people there, all dressed in gowns and tuxes, and I always say, yes, how do you do? And I said, so, uh, you're doing two sets. And we went, two sets? Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. And we immediately go to the bar. I don't remember what you're the job. The faculty advisor, who was a very pinched-faced little woman, comes up and says, are, you're, you're in the band, aren't you? I went, yes, I am, man. I'm in the band. Because well, you're not going to drink on the job, are you? And I said, oh, oh, heavens, yes. Oh, no, oh, yes. Definitely. There's no way. She goes, well, I don't drink on my job. I said, you should try it. You'd be really good. be a good idea. And she did. She did. So, we do the first set. We clear the room. It's great. They just go out and hang outside and smoke cigarettes because you're not allowed to smoke inside a college. I don't really understand. What drink? So, we're in between the two sets, we're sitting upstairs sweating and cursing whoever booked the show. Who booked the show? It was him! Here comes the tricky part. The faculty advisor comes up. She says, uh, that was interesting. We were wondering if you could do something in the second set that our African-American students might enjoy. So of course I said, well, we, we closed the gospel number. She says, do you think that's funny? I said, no. <laughs> we close with the gospel number. She decides to talk to Zumble. She says, listen. And Zumble says, Zumble says, the woman says in a pinched little way with her thin little lips and her hateful eyes, says, we're paying you good money here. And they did pay us good money. By check. <laughs> I want you to do something that everyone here will enjoy. He says, well, we have a song about a famous um, comedian who's, who was a, he was a, it was a credit to the race. He broke the color barrier on television. I think everyone will enjoy that. She says, are you fucking with me? She didn't say that. She says, you better. And Zumble said, uh, oh, 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 yes, we do. Oh, have a chance. Nazi 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 Nazi
cleared, it's all over. Right. The next song goes out to the punk rock girls. I need to tell you about that show. The best thing about Marymount was a bunch of punk rocks from Philadelphia drove down and snuck in. Good. It was great. They dressed up, they had a good time and drank for free. And I'm proud to say, it was the girls' idea. Oh, the girls' idea. I want you to understand how I feel. I got kicked out of the only emo band I was ever in. I find it hard to express myself. Hard to share. Feel my angst. Unfortunately, I don't really feel much angst. I do whatever the hell I want, so I'm quite happy. It's difficult to hang out with the kids nowadays. Fuck you! Yes, yes, they do that as well. That might be why I'm so happy. The song is for those of you who are not as happy as I, or even worse, oppressed. My friends, the pagans will have their day, and this song is for the witches. <laughs>
brief as I possibly can. I got something to say. I'm going to say it clearly and slowly so everybody here understands. Films, there's a message in this song, and the message is... Fuck the police! <laughs> give too much away about my personal life. But I'm dancing, you know, it looks easy, but it's about as hard as it feels, let me tell you. Bars are good. I like bars. 
I did my line of work, I see a lot of bars. The bad thing about the kind of bars I see in my line of work is there's, there's usually bands playing. And bands are bad. Oh, I'll tell you. I've seen an awful lot of bands and I wish I hadn't. I used to like guitars quite a lot. I thought they were neat. Lucky. I, I like Lucky. Except for Lucky. Except for Lucky. Who's that? Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. No, if there had to be one guitar player in the world, it should be Lucky. But friends... Yeah. There's so much more than one guitar player in the world, I'm sorry to tell you. And I think in the course of my short yet very busy career, I've seen about 758 of them. Some bands have more than one. We've even seen bands that have three guitar players. So very painful. But you know, I know we're talking about me, and we're here to talk about you. I'm sorry to waste your hour. I know you're paid to get here. Here's what I have to say to you. You're at a bar. Hopefully there's no band playing, or if there is, hopefully they haven't started yet. You ordered a drink. You realize you gave all your money away for stuff. Stuff. You've got the stuff back at your place and not with you. Maybe you paid it for cigarettes. Cigarettes are popular things. So you've ordered this drink and you're sitting there. Oh. Kaminsky. God love Texas. And you're nowhere near Texas. There's no one there to pay for your drink. You look at the bartender. She does not like working in the afternoon because only deadbeats like you come in. You take a sip. Now you've bought it. You say, you know, uh, you buy me this drink, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you a story. And she looks at you and goes, oh, but you start the story anyway. I Life, a little oh, blood yeah. must spill. Oh, the blood. Oh, blood. 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 
I'm so psyched. I'm like jealous because I told you when I get my work done. Oh! Is this okay? No, you bitch. Get out of the way. Fine. No, absolutely. Like, it's a lot of work, you know. Well, I'm interning at PSP. Cold and heartless. Yeah. With all the blood running through all our veins tonight, we could feed a family of four for a good month and a half. So very selfish of us to keep the blood to ourselves. What are we doing with it all? It's just we're just diluting it with alcohol. We're just yeah. we're so selfish. We've got a good time, my friends. Blood. We're all gonna die. Blood. And what will you have when you die? You'll still have the blood, but it won't do anybody any good. And you'll have all these memories, and the only good the memories will do you is that you're gonna cry and make your friends cry. Blood. 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 I'll buy it. Please dare to waltz with the one you love. Okay. Alaska, and I don't count Alaska. Fuck yeah! Man goes to Denver, Texas. This man has a message, and the message is violence. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dan Bailey!
of the jury. You are all This thing is a timing! <laughs> in Brooklyn. nowadays about this Christ figure. Yeah, some guy, some hippie bothers me. The big holiday y'all have. What do you do on this holiday? You put a tree in your house. Why do you think you got the idea for a tree? He's doing for my people. Christians have kept us down for so long, so long. I'm not a complainer in my nature. I'm more of a breaker. But you know, they let us play here, so I've stopped breaking things. So, I'm going to complain. Light something on fire! Sell out! 
Yes. I did it for the money. Could I have the money now? You and you Christians with the trees in your house and all your oh, good presents and all oh, Christ was born and was so great and the people came and they gave him frankincense. What the fuck is frankincense? Do you know what myrrh is? Nobody knows. That's accepted. No one asks the obvious question. Why the hell is there a tree in your house? I'm here to tell you. Because you worship a plant. And that's why I like you. Because I worship a plant as well. I've been so very good this year. I want all the Christians to admit that they are just like me and that makes them start raving, lunatic, mad drinking gin like water. Friends, you worship a tree, it's a short, short jump to the Great Pumpkin! The Great Pumpkin! The Great Pumpkin! This year we get to get to your loved ones. We get to get to people you don't really like, but you have to buy them because you're girlfriend's family. No, you think of one thing. That thing is not the Christ child and your big white god in the sun. This thing is a plant that comes from the earth and his name is the Great Pumpkin. Tomorrow and the next day, when you're home visiting your moms and pops, after they've fed you because they might not feed you after you say this, say, I've been thinking a lot about it. You've been lying to me your whole life. You taught me these things. This is not skin color. These crayons, I can eat them and I could live. You lie. You lie. I see crayons all the time. I know you did. You also use a bit, use a bit of glue on your fingers and then peel it off. I know all about you kids. The great poker knows too. That's in fact you told me. The great pumpkin loves you, he doesn't need much. All he asks is occasionally you remember him and stand up for him. Please stand up for yourselves. Don't give in to the giant sun god who hates you and will not let the crops grow. The sun god, it's just the sun. <laughs> Life comes from the earth. The great pumpkin is who you owe. So next time you see him, do not turn away from him. Take his candy, look him in the eye and say, Why don't you...
sending a white to you. Delicious candy you never had. Is there some candy you want that you never got? Miss? I'm afraid so. Please tell me. Oh, I don't know. I need some lovin'. Oh, no. Lovin' is a different god. Oh. I'm just talking about candy. I'm sorry, you'll have to go see the, the uh... You'll have to see the book of Iris tonight. And then you're sore, you've got a sweet tooth. And I can see you're not going to help me out. So I'll just leave you the lucky. This one. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> and I will testify myself. When I'm feeling down. I feel depressed and sometimes I get very depressed. It's not good. It's not It's pretty sad. I go. And I get a candy bar. Mm, candy bar. <laughs> And I've had one candy bar, and I go back out, and I said, ah, did you have any more of those candy bars? They're very, they're very delicious, man. No, no, no more candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any, do you have any gum? Oh yeah, I got a lot of gum. Which kind do you like? I said, I like Big Red. Can I have all the Big Red you got? Just put it there. Do you take, uh, do you take, do you take Discover? They said, nobody fucking takes Discover, of course. <laughs> So I go home, I sit in my apartment, and look at my roommate's conflict posters. <laughs> Painful. And I wish it were Halloween so I could go to the neighbors and ask for candy. And I realized the people that live next to me probably never heard of Halloween, and I could probably just go over and ask for candy. <laughs> so I go over and I say, hello. Anything sweet that I can eat? Got anything you want? I can can't cookies, cookies. And yes, I get cookies. And and for the cookies, and for the cookies, the cookies that I get from my delightful neighbors back in Brooklyn, that's what I want to testify about. And like everyone just say, fuck yes! Fuck yes! Cookies, fuck yes! Fuck yes! Cookies, fuck yes! Cookies, fuck yes! That was beautiful. Anyone else want to testify? Well, then, just think about it for next time, because we're always waiting for you and your point of view. But until then, I want you to remember, college or something. I don't know what you do with your time. And your mom says, what have you been doing? You seeing anybody? You know, reading the good books? And he's like, once again, I wanted to just pound this in your head. You lied to me about all that stuff. Dude, there's no sun god. The sun god isn't angry at me. I'm okay with just about everything. You lied. 
This will be good, and I bet your grandparents will laugh. And if they don't, give me their phone number, and I'll explain to your grandparents what I mean. Let's get some stuff. Let's get some stuff. You know, after the show, we're all going back to Brooklyn. We're going to get some uh, stuff. Yeah. Hey, you want to come back to Brooklyn? Should be a pretty good time, because we're going to get some. Um... Fucked up. Okay. It's going to be all right. It's going to be good. Friends, a few more things to ask you before we all go. I hope you had a good time. I hope you're very drunk. I hope you tipped. I hope, I hope you stole someone's wallet. What? It would make me feel all right. My wallet's downstairs. I bet you could beat me there if you had a good time. We're gonna say one more time. God damn! God damn!